Hello, welcome to Africa's Home. My name is Jean. Africa's Home Podcast. Hello, welcome to Africa's Home Podcast. My name is Jean Paul. Today, we are going to talk to you about the peace and stability in the continent. See, in 1884 and 1885, Berlin Conference took place in Germany. The then German Chancellor Bismarck and uh, King Leopold II organized this conference to conquer and divide Africa. They therefore ended up conquering and colonizing Africa. In the late 1950s, ni early 1960s, the African founding fathers fought for the independence of Africa. And then in the late 1960s, early 1970s, there were coups followed by the assassinations to remove the heads of state or to kill uh, the heads of state. And then came the 1990s to present Africa is still facing the impact of Berlin Conference where there is coups, there is terrorist attack, and there is uh, ethnic war. The question then is, can Africa achieve peace and stability? Joining me now to discuss about this problem is the co-founder of Africa is Home, Platini Womela. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And my good friend, Alex. Alex is a security expert. Thank you so much thank for joining so much, Africa is Home today. today. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Alex, <coughs> when you look at the continent uh, after the things I've said, uh, the coups and the attacks, do you think Africa can achieve peace and stability? Uh, from my opinion, there's a long way to go before that even takes root in the first place. Because uh, if you look at just individual countries themselves, there's so much drama, there's so much tribalistic warfare, you know, like in the same, even in the same tribe, there's clan fighting. An example would be Somali, you know, mm -hmm. Somali is, <coughs> for the most part, the whole country is a monolithic country with the same religion, mm -hmm. same language. The Ch only country in Africa that speaks one language. The whole country speaks the, the same language. The whole country speaks, yeah. So, but the problem with that country is... Um, you have all these different clans, then inside the clans you have subclans, and all these subclans have their own individual small units that are still fighting each other. Mm -hmm. So peace and stability in Africa is a long way to go once you start factoring, um, you know, from a micro view all the way to a macro view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to follow up with what uh, Mr. Jampot ju just said, uh, sir. So is it? Uh, do you think this the the the, the level of instability in Africa could be from foreign? Inter intervention or is it <coughs> more of a tribalistic problem? It's both, uh, I would say it's a more internal versus external. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. also this varies, you know, depending on the region of Africa uh, right. or the specific countries. countries. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example in West Africa, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, the Francophone countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of the insecurity comes externally from France. Mm -hmm. right. These countries have been colonized right now. They're still co new colonized. Mm -hmm. uh, financially and uh, through uh, everything else by France. Mm -hmm. So most of the instability comes from outside. Um, I'll mm -hmm. give you an example, Mali. <coughs> it's a huge, huge country, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like you have three major tribes or I'll say ethnicities. Mm -hmm. But the reason they're fighting there is because the French government and the system in place in France keeps on paying all these different individual tribes to fight each other. Right. Just because the country is really rich in platinum. They benefit off of our conflict. Yeah, they benefit off the conflict. Mm -hmm. So if Africa gets to a point where it's peaceful, the ex-colonial masters, or in some cases the current <coughs> colonial masters, uh, they, won't <coughs> they won't get to a point of getting stuff for cheap or for free. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep your enemies confused yeah. so that they can stay weak. Definitely. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. how yeah. They, 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 over they, over. they benefit. Yeah, even to add to that, when you look at... Um, and a, a country like Cameroon. Yep. Yeah. I always like to reference there because it's my country and I've been there forever. So before I left Cameroon in two, 2019 to come to America, there was a tribal, I, 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 would, I would like to say a, a tribal war 
it's, it's not really a tribal war. It was uh, 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 ethnic war, the, uh, Amazonia and it's not even Francophone ethnic. and it's, Anglophone. It's more French and English yeah. fighting each other. Yes. That's still going yes. on, though. Yeah, it's still going on yeah. today. I'm yeah. still getting updates on that war up to today. Yeah. And then when you look at it, you 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 see that okay, someone from from a neighboring tribe. Okay, there's this tribe we call uh, the the Bamini kids. Mm -hmm. They're basically they basically have the same culture as the people of. Uh, of 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 mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. which is is now in the English <coughs> section, Bamili case in the French. Mm -hmm. If you look at people from the Moom tribe, they mm -hmm. have the same uh, culture with the Nso. Mm -hmm. The Moom now is in French, and so is in English, in the English side of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. You see how they're fighting each other, killing each other. Now, no, you French and English, it's it's stupid. It doesn't make <coughs> any sense because because uh, both are actually colonial brothers, languages. Your brothers, you, that is a colonial thing. That's like mental colonization. There you right. go. So it's mental it's they see what the europeans did they colonized us mentally mm -hmm. and physically so we are meant to think that everything african is bad yeah absolutely. everything european it's is better. good yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's that's the problem divide and conquer they use the rule that's exactly what's happening in cameroon right, right now right, now. right? Yeah. see francophone and anglophone neither of them are african languages why are we fighting Fre there's no french person in cameroon that's what i said right yeah why are we if fighting? A French person there in France, an English person is in England. We are Africans, right? How? So how? I don't understand. It's it's mental, like you say. Now we have a new front that something we never expected will reach Africa. Terrorist attack. We see it in Somalia. We see it in in Nigeria. Nigeria. We yeah. We see it in in Mali. In Mali you know, so Chad. So how can we eliminate <coughs> this problem? That's the other thing. Like. Uh, even most Kenya. of this terrorism is actually caused by uh it's not even about ethnicity or something like that it's mostly religious okay yeah like in nigeria in the delta region like you have the biggest insurgency there is op mostly caused by uh difference of religion mm -hmm. and uh like you know the living standards you have like really uh, poor people having um extracting oil illegally that kind of stuff so you have like different factions trying to extract the same oil, oil. illegally so they start fighting mm -hmm. so that's a different point uh that's not necessarily so much about religion but it's cost about religion mm -hmm. we have people coming from north nigeria from like places like kano and everything else coming down mm -hmm. uh these guys are mostly the top half of nigeria is islam Right, yeah. right. Northern so, part. Yeah, yeah, so you have those guys. Yeah, so and the Islam, the, the Islam part, the top part is super broke. Like they don't have farming lands. You know, like they have terrorists coming from other. You know, like from other locations. From right. yeah, like like Mali and other countries. Yeah, mm -hmm. from like uh, this that uh, this that corner of the country where it's like a bo it's a border of four different countries. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the name of that part. So you have all these people coming from the north who are poor as it gets. Then they go to the Delta region. They start like you know trying to get rich by uh, illegally getting oil. oil. Then start fighting with the Christian guys that, that are already there because okay. the half the, the the bottom half is already Christian. Mm -hmm. So you have this terrorism which comes mostly not even about like uh, not even about like uh, the European situation. It's about mm -hmm. mostly religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the disability in this Nigeria. This has been going on for so long and. Um, just about two weeks ago, I also read this article that was uh, that, that was stating that uh, there's so many uh, students yeah. that have been kidnapped that the Nigerian yes. government don't even remote report about by Boko Haram. It happens and like every week. Shut yes. down schools up there. Yeah. So this problem, do you think it's more of a of a poverty situation or it's really about religion? That it's both. Okay. <coughs> so okay. For, for one, like I, if you like, if you're really poor, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get rich. To Absolutely. get rich. You have to yeah. feed your family. And then that also like uh, you add religion into that because you know there's the whole idea of uh, um, forgot the name of that terrorist group which is like basically saying anti everything of the West or anti West everything. ISIS. Oh, not ISIS. ISIS. Boko Haram. Yeah, Boko Haram. Yeah, Boko Haram, Boko Haram is a, yeah, it's it, it, rising that territory all the way up to the northern part of Cameroon. Yeah. Yes. yes. So yeah, like you add poverty into the mix, then you add like all these um, religious situations, mm -hmm. then you add like also political instability you actually have like a really nice bonfire in the making okay. so the the big question is okay all this country nigeria we say uh, kenya somalia they have militaries how come uh, our military incapable of stopping these terrorists how can they strategize to stop this terrorism um actually our militaries suck 
<laughs> True. I mean, and, it's a fact. That's why I have a problem. Because with it, I don't understand. It's very hard in that in a territory like Nigeria because it's it's uh, you sh you you fighting with these guys in like a jungle. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like yo you have like these strategic places where you can put on drones, cameras, and you capture these people. They, 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 they're doing like they, 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 in those days type of fight where you come out you, sh you, I you mean, drop something and then you go right in the, in, the, in, the, in the jungle in that case yeah like it's like Afghanistan you have like uh, when the US was there is yeah. like basically you have a, like a military that structure like the US military uh, system yeah. versus the Afghan population who are just doing guerrilla warfare you yeah, gorilla wolf that's the word i was looking for yeah you'll yeah. never you'll never you'll never stop that and that's the same thing that's going on in ukraine so if that happens in nigeria you have like the nigerian or the west african military complex come to crush these guys they will be there for like another th thousand years before they stop these guys Just to stop these guys yeah the, like the easiest way is like you know like you eradicate poverty people have like if you have something to lose you'll protect it at all cost yeah at all cost so like that's where like things are uh, groups like Boko Haram are really like big because they have they're, they're not even fighting about you know like uh, making money they, they feel threatened they feel like they're losing their way of life mm -hmm. so they will fight to death to the death so you if you try and have a situation where like like the north of Nigeria where like it's prosperous mm -hmm. people like they're defending their own towns people are paying taxes for so that the military can and the police can protect them mm -hmm. I mean, there's always going to be corruption like crazy, but <laughs> 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 protect them. So they will, they, they will join the fight because they'll have something to lose. To lose. Yeah. Okay. So um, this uh, Boko Haram situation, there's, there's also been speculations that uh, their sponsorships might be from the West. Because the, the type of guns they carry, yeah. the that bullets they carry, question. and, and the tanks behind all they carry, who because is sponsoring Like you said, they're in the jungle. They have nothing. nothing. Where are they getting the ammunition mm -hmm. to attack people? I mean, we talked about this earlier. Who is the biggest loser is if Africa came at peace? Africa. The West. The West. Exactly. The West is the biggest loser. So, yeah, you can say like a certain politician or senator in Nigeria is funding these uh, criminals. Yeah. But... That is way above the, a senator. Yeah, it's way above. But where is the senator getting like the pro probably the senator has money? But where is he getting the resources to ship those things illegally across, across. multiple states? Obviously, it's from the west. And they have right. the most advanced guns. I don't even think the Nigerian military has guns that that these Boko Haram people have. Yeah, they have like the latest technology in guns. Because if you see what they do in Kenya, you saw how they did in the Gateway Mall. You know, the, the, that was the Al Shabab. Mm -hmm. I was surprised where did they get that weapon to blow up a big mall like that i mean you like know it's in kenya it's just like i was probably say it's like really huge incompetence by the police in the first place <laughs> <laughs> because that was not supposed to happen like i mean kenya is is at the border of like one of the, the one of yeah. the lowest countries on the planet the, the the least you can do is protect that border and prevent these people coming in See, if they attack Northern Kenya, it's one thing because it's super close. Right. But now they come to they the capital to, to the Nairobi Atlanta, to one of the richest, uh, one of the biggest. No, they came all the way into Nairobi. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, bro, it was a big. It was back in 2016, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think. So. Yeah, there was a that big. Get, I remember that mall. Get more. We all know it. How I was surprised. How it was a surprise for everybody. It was like okay, but the good thing <laughs> Kenya land after that is don't underestimate idiots with guns yep yeah don't, don't because that's idiots. not the first time either in 1994 the u.s embassy they no, blew in kenya that was in 1997 1997 i remember that because i was going to i was, I was, going, I was going to school <laughs> <laughs> i remember that because that's <laughs> when we first moved into kenya 97 yeah. oh yeah. you lived in kenya i did live in kenya yeah. Yes. oh nice okay. yeah um so yeah that happened so you would think they will try to prevent that from happening again mm -hmm. yeah you know so okay we talked about but the, the 1997 situation was different because that was guys, osama kind of yeah situation. they were trying to attack a milit uh, the america, america the american basically, city. so yeah. basically they bombed the embassy mm -hmm. but the buildings around you know kind of they didn't touch the buildings around or they just no 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 the them. u.s embassy in nairobi was bombed Bomb. by organized terrorists Terrorist. yeah yeah so the the surrounding buildings and banks and stuff like that they got affected by you know like the bomb shock waves and things mm -hmm. like that yeah so i have a questions uh, for, for you gentlemen like Ms. mr jampo do you think uh with this situation of this uh organized terrorist groups in in africa like the Boko Haram, of course the and all of them mm -hmm. do you think uh diplomacy like negotiations can work with these people absolutely can not. Reason with them? absolutely they not. need to get a big stick <laughs> 
No. Because <laughs> they need it, it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm laughing. It's really not funny. These but. people, <laughs> it's an ideology. It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a religion. They believe what they are doing is right. Yeah. Mm. Because they are causing at those atrocities and the human uh, 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 bloodshed that's going on. It's not normal. Diplomacy can solve that. It's their religion. It's something that they believe in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. they don't see anything wrong with that. So why don't we try to get like the the, the religious leaders, like the sheikhs? They have tried to so come in terms know. with them to like educate them on like okay, even though the Quran says this, says this, but this is how it actually means because I feel like there's a lot of ignorance playing mm-hmm. in this. A lot, yeah, a lot. The lack of intelligence uh, yes. literacy is too much when it comes to these people a and lot. how they go about handling these things. We understand that okay. There are a lot of there's a lot of poverty in a lot of places in Africa, right? right. And the government should be addressing these things. Absolutely. And the government is actually adamant about it. They are not saying anything, yeah. but going about it, destroying your own city, stopping the, the, your your own children from going to school, mm-hmm. it's Kidnapping not gonna help solve this. It's only gonna help us produce another uh, generation of illiterates. But that's their goal to stop kids from going to school. Because they Wonderful. believe in that's that. That's their goal. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and if, if that's their goal, they're really successful at it. Cool. Yeah, they did kidnapping st- students all up, uh, all up and there. And you also mentioned about, like, uh, why can't the, uh, the imams and the sheikhs talk to these guys? Mm-hmm. Do you think the sheikhs and the imams will side with the government over their own religion in the first place? No. Not gonna to happen. them, religion comes first but and yeah. then government. But it is hurting their own people. These people that are kidnapping are not people from out of their religion. That's yeah. okay with yeah, them. That's okay Muslim with them. people. Yeah, it's okay with them. And here's what I, I don't understand. In Nigeria, for instance, mm-hmm. what is Boko Haram doing? Like, what are they even thinking of doing in Nigeria? I can understand if it was Middle East, mm-hmm. you know. I'm not saying it's okay that it's happening there. But we are not that core of, like, you know... Yeah, Muslim, Islams. Islams. See, that's another thing we imported. Like religion is an importation. We had our own religions way back when, right? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like c- countries like uh, I don't know, Ghana, Guinea, Sierra mm-hmm. Leone. They mm-hmm. had the Voodoo systems. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So they all had their different religions. So like even going to going to an extra stretch about like uh, importing stuff that's not ours. You know, mm-hmm. like for example, is like uh, <laughs> the Western system of democracy is an importation. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is that our next topic. That, does, next topic. That, that doesn't work at all. No. no. So, like, it, it works if the country has been at peace by itself mm-hmm. for a very long time, then you can actually, like, uh, get together and vote for, you know, mm-hmm. a common president or a common prime minister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In Africa, that's not going to work because we have, we're still so divided internally and externally. We're already f- super divided, anyway. Because, you know, Naturally, we were ruled by kings and queens, right? Yeah. We, were, we had kingdoms. It system. was a hereditary system, yeah. right? System where you just right, pass it and down then this was imposed to us, and then it. You see it happening. Paul B has been in the power since before I was oh born. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. this yeah. day, Mugabe literally died in power. <laughs> in power. And I would think you know? Kobe might die in power. So too. yeah, that <coughs> here's another thing too. Like people like Paul Kagame who took Rwanda, the office when Rwanda was down to dust, that country, you know, was sinking. Look what he has done. Would it be wrong for Rwandan to vote him out? Or is it okay for him to stay a little longer? Rwanda, like, whatever happened in Rwanda in 1994, like, that's like, what, 30 years ago? Almost 30 years. About, yeah. Almost 30 about years 30 ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah. The country is still too young to actually, you know, still a baby when it comes to democracy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so, like, Kagame, for, this is my personal opinion again. <laughs> yeah. He should stay in power as long First as he's doing his job, which he has done a really good job. Right. Yeah. But on my on my on my personal opinion, to I, I really think they should give Kagami more time. Yes, yeah. you you might just change him and bring someone in there with a corrupted mind that was just gonna bring down the country. Yeah, from ex- where it is, and then just take it backward. I mean, if it was like a president like uh, Uganda's president mm-hmm. uh, Museveni. Museveni, he has not helped Uganda with anything. Mm-hmm. So him right. being voted but out. But only one peace. Thing. Peace. The only part is a little because I lived in Uganda as well. It's a little bit peaceful, and they take a lot of refugees. That's the only positive thing that you will hear about him in the mainstream media. Yeah. Otherwise, not in internally, he's killing and eliminating every like opponent time. except Bobu yeah, Wine. He's like, he's like Santa. Huh? Bobu Wine is the only survivor that survived. It's because Bobu Wine opponent. has a love of the people. He can't even try. The yeah. People are like all over the map. Otherwise, he's a, yeah. What about like uh, that guy Besigye? Oh, oh, be, he Besigye. Yeah, he, he locked him up long time ago. <laughs> I don't know if he's still out. <laughs> yeah, he locked yeah. him up. The guy's still in jail. Jeez. Like I said, Bobu Wine is the only one that's making. These last elections that, that happened in Uganda, 
Guys, it's believed he won, do but you guys you know, think it's like African. I think Bobby Wine won. I was well, yes. I was following the polls and they just like everything just went south. I didn't yeah. really, it was like damn. Yeah. This, this is impossible. Yeah. I mean Bobby Wine won, but like before it was official uh magic happened and he mm. lost. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so now let's look at things uh from different perspective mm-hmm. you see what's going on in ukraine right now right mm-hmm. you see how ukrainian are doing everything in their part to defend their land mm-hmm. let's say the opposite happened in africa as a security expert do you think we have enough capacity militarily and ammunition to defend to defend our lands uh from i mean defend from who i mean let's say we're being attacked, attacked. by china by for china. instance external. you know external attack just somebody say, okay, I want to invade or oh, re oh, conquer invade Africa. Africa. Do you think we have <laughs> an I'm the biggest capability? Propo- I'm the biggest proponent for, like, an example is like Kagame. Mm-hmm. I have a bunch of presidents like that where their goal is not to just militarize, militarize Africa for the sake of it, mm-hmm. but to give Africa a chance of self-defense. Like We need that. You, you have a dictator with, like, you know, like, who's not brutal, that's one, but two, who's, like, forward-thinking. You mm-hmm. know, like Africa has so much, so many. Like in the next generation, like the world will depend on Africa more. We when are it comes the to youngest oil. continent in the world. We are the only left land. Yeah, yeah. we don't. Li- yeah, exactly. So, uh, if we got like, <laughs> if for some reason we got attacked by China, or whatever, like say Africa became a country by itself, then yeah. we got attacked by China. I don't think the West would be helping us at all. No, no, that's that's no. that was my no, point. That's something no. that we need to push forward. No, that, Afri- that's my point. That's what I was we're asking gonna get you. Do yes. you think the way yeah. looking at things, we will be capable of defending our land? No, like no, we won't. We could, we can't. And that's why I'm really super happy. Africa is staying away from that Ukraine Russia business. Yes. In general, like, like, even like uh, uh what's his name? Like uh, Ukraine's president Z- Zelensky. Yeah, Zelensky. Uh, yeah, Zelensky. Zelensky. Yeah, he tried coming to uh, AU. I heard. He, I yeah. read. He wanted to to, to, to negotiate address, with AU to address, address the AU, AU yeah. so they can help him militarily. And he got stopped. <laughs> I even came to Kenya, and he like he got really pissed off because like the the Kenyan government would let me stalk in their parliament, and the Kenyan foreign minister was like, guys, hey, I'm sorry, but uh, he's like, hey, go through the about right what channels. Zelensky said. Right, I read this meme online. I don't know if I just see this right here. <laughs> well, it, like this guy, this Nigerian guy was asking Zelensky, "What does he want? A, a coco yams or what?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was asking, like, okay, you asking for him. what do you want us to send? Two bars of yam from Nigeria? <laughs> just send me, <laughs> just send him fufu. We'll be okay. That just shows how much security we lack. Yeah, yeah. even no, the people honestly, of the country, of our country, don't defense, even believe that we have anything. Yes, and looking at how, because right now I would say there's another scramble for Africa beginning right now. It, people it are not beginning even to be- rush. It began. Rush back to Africa. This time around, they want to industrialize Africa for their benefit. They don't want to just go to get raw materials and uh, raw materials and leave. They want to yeah. industrialize Africa for their benefit, and so you they, can leave all the pollution in Africa. There we go. <laughs> and African youths are rising. Yeah, like the way we are here right now. There's that's a lot of other youths right we now have to mm-hmm. take coming up saying, that, "No, this is not gonna work." Yeah, I feel like there's gonna be conflict right there. I mean, like there's gonna be a conflict down the road. I yeah. can see that happening. Like I, I see that already. At, yeah, before because like okay, like basically what they keep on saying is like Africa will be the next china which means like we're gonna be the next uh the global factory absolutely which comes with its own drama like the only reason like china actually got successful at that was um you know it's kind of a dictatorship so whatever happens happens Mm -hmm. but in africa most of the countries are like quote-unquote democracies they're not democracy they're just democracy by name they're so, confused so that gives like in my country is called the democratic republic, republic of, of congo, congo. there's all no human rights try to criticize the president they will find you the next day all countries <laughs> called all countries are started with the word democratic republic <laughs> there is no democracy <laughs> Like just the like the Republic of Cameroon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me what's democracy about Cameroon? What is democracy you can't about d- you can't criticize the president. No, they won't find you the next day. Oh, you know. On. Just let this session that we're having right now go viral. Yeah. Yep. And and, and before you know we'll it, be I, can't, I, can't, I can't step my foot in the country. Yeah. Man, like Which I'm okay with it, but it's stupid. See how China Africa could learn from China. We all know in the eighties, China not even eighties, seventies, China was poor country. It was very poor. Rice and milk. Mm-hmm. They s- use their labor, U.S. ships, their companies there. They use their labor, and then they make, they build their country through that labor. Mm-hmm. Africa has the young, sixty-two percent of population in Africa under age of thirty. I wouldn't like compare that like one to one because the 
internal Chinese stuff. I watch a lot of Chinese stuff on YouTube because mm-hmm. I'm really interested in how that country is going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you say how, did you say how he's gonna fail? I am interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the problem with China, like when sorry. it comes when it comes to labor, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> they they saw their labor. <laughs> like all this, like okay, like the internal labor is borderline slave labor. Mm-hmm. So like unless you want our kids and our youth to basically live with that kind of st- like slave labor stuff, I wouldn't want Africa to be like the next no. China. Cause no. Like, Cause we're not gonna do that you know why because we have so many resources to support us yeah. when you look at where china are we benefiting china from it have that much first oh, of okay, all I you know that go ahead sir. first sorry. of all you yeah. know that we don't own our own mines right we don't process our natural resources our, we don't have refineries i heard aliko dango they built few refineries in nigeria to He's process w- i believe it was for oil and gold kagame built one for to process gold, gold yeah, yeah. that's it that. Otherwise, Kudos it's Kadak- been Kadak- processed Kadak- elsewhere, and then we buy. I think there's. A, I'm not sure. If, I think it's also Chad, the one that had a like. A, it was Chad that with a or with a coup. Chad had a coup. Yes. Yeah, Chad had a, had a coup. Do you they know had what, a coup. He do, you know, Idris, do you know? Yeah. Do you know why the West is really anti him right now? Because he's he to, he like Chad is one of the biggest exporters of uranium. Right. So the mm. uh, the guy <laughs> the guy was that's like, a very dangerous game right there. Yeah. Uranium. So, so he, like he's been trying to be assassinated multiple times. Yes. So <laughs> so he was like he was like he basically kicked out the French mm-hmm. and kicked out pretty much almost. I think he welcomed the he's dealing with the Russians. Yeah. Now he's dealing yes. with the Russians, but his yeah. point was like, we don't care who we're dealing with as long as our people make money from the deal. Yes. And the West is really pissed off. They're like, of course, because like the West is. Like I say, anything that happens uh, when it comes to development in Africa, if it's by the West, there's always a catch. Yes. I think if it's by anybody out of Africa, there's always a catch at this point. Yeah. Even Chinese. And that's why I believe that security right now is something we should really be focusing on in Africa as a people. Because sooner or later, again, like I said, we are rising and we want our what is ours to be ours. Yeah. yeah. When you look at countries like France, let's be honest, France directly survive off. Yeah, Africa. French Africa. If West Africa is Period. gone, France will, will be like a third world country. Period. Period. Okay. Yeah. If, yes. So now that we are rising and, and we are like, okay, no, we're going to have to do this on our own terms and conditions. We're going to trade with you quite all right, but we're going to do this on our own terms and conditions. France is not going to like that. And before you know it, we're going to have so many different things going wrong in, in, in Africa. They will pull like, uh, let's go spread democracy like they spread democracy in Libya. In Libya. They're going to come with that democracy bullshit. Yeah. Before you know it, sorry guys for cursing on, 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 on this channel. Yeah, yeah. But they're gonna come with that so we need to work on security because for for an emerging continent like africa a continent that is super <coughs> emerging this this fast right now security is one of the backbones to be we able to don't protect look, the lands and our people we talked about this last time strategically we don't have any strategy to protect the continents let me tell you why china has built a military base in the coast of africa Djibouti. that was gonna be my next point yeah. so we just that right there or they are controlling that area you know what that is terrible trade they can trade with anybody so because you know it connects it, it has talking access. about Djibouti yes but like that place is like the world's biggest military base because you have like five huge countries US there. China Russia Russia France so you tell yeah. me where is where is, where is the right. security here's the thing though that is our lands that's oh, a good you question we can't defend it this question is going to be directed directly to you mm-hmm. What do you think about all of these countries putting their big military bases in Africa? These people that own nuclear weapons. Uh, one, it's a disaster. It's, it's, it's a major disaster. It's a major mess up for like our country, our continent. Because like, say World War Three happens tomorrow. The first, uh, after these two huge powers stop fighting each other, then they'll start bombing each other's bases around the world. And that Djibouti is basically an excess. Anybody, anybody can drop. We a didn't mean it. It's a tiny so little country. In the we are, we are a house with no doors. Yeah, and like that's one of the things. Like uh, a while back, uh, the United States wanted to. Um, so like U.S. has different commands, right? So there's a, there's a European command, there's a North American command, mm-hmm. there's a Eurasia command. So there's also an Africa command. <laughs> so once upon a t- <laughs> why do we need any an african command we're not even frozen a trade to nobody they want to keep on like you know like maintaining like you know they want to control what you do from mm-hmm. far so at that point so uh that was i think that was during obama's time mm-hmm. yeah it was during obama so they wanted to have like an Af- african command on african soil they approached so many countries and most countries are like <laughs> yeah trust me we don't want to deal with the bs right now so keep your stuff in europe that's where like the african command now is based in italy 
because most African countries are like, yep, nope, we don't want you guys here, we don't want you That's guys That's why you did that? Yeah. I didn't even know. Then that, that kudos to Africa, if they did that, that means... Yeah. So, but they were, does yeah. it do us any good? Like we just say, our coast are not... We don't control our coast. Because the security of a country is in both by sea and by land. Mm-hmm. We don't control neither. I mean, like... see. The I thing. mean, maybe the air, we can say, okay, you can't land here, we'll shoot you. But in case of a war... We don't have any any defense. Do you see the access? Someone can just literally fly a boat from here into Africa. <laughs> Nobody's like, <laughs> we, we not, so we I can fly a boat we from we here to Africa. If, if you, have your, you, you can fly a boat just boom, straight to Africa. Just no that's yeah, yeah, like I mean, you end up landing in some random place in the Sahara, but okay, good. Too. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you can you can go. You, know, you can go. There's no like there's no maritime security in the first place. No, no that's like what that. I'm trying to say. Nothing. I mean, the problem like uh, when it comes to security is like it's like catch twenty two, right? So what comes first? Uh, security mm-hmm. or like basically uh, internal social cohesion security but like you can have security if your own people are still fighting each other you can defend yes. you can de- you cannot defend yourself from mm-hmm. like china mm-hmm. if, if we can defend that's, yourself that's, that's, that was yeah. my next my next so, thing too like in the uh, agenda 2063 of uh, AU, mm. one of the, the, the theme was the gun must be silent in 2020, two years ago. I mean, like, I don't know what they're smoking. <laughs> Bro, but what are like you saying? <laughs> it's African Union. AU, Africa Union. Yeah. yeah. African Union is basically look, a bunch look, of look, people sitting doing look, nothing. Look at, look, look at South money. Sudan. Nothing. Look at Congo, Cameroon, Somalia, Chad. And is Burkina Faso is there peace and stability in those countries before we even move forward? I think economic, econo- yeah, like the economics aspect of it, will come before peace and stability. Because, like I said, if you have a huge company that you run that's yours, that you, you know from the ground up, you will do everything to protect it and protect your family. Mm-hmm. Now, imagine if everybody had huge companies, nobody would want to fight. <laughs> okay. Before the that's economic that aspect, before the valid. security, right? I think the education <laughs> has to be the beginning. Yes, but that's that's. that's I mean, so the education is kind of working because, like, right now, everybody, almost everybody, has internet. Yeah, we have to educate them that okay. Yeah, but is everyone? Does everyone we have has built access? in Africa? So here's the thing: you talked about economy. Mm-hmm. Our farmers can't farm in peace if they're being attacked with Boko Haram. Yeah. So we need security in a sense. Because our students can go to can't school get if they are being kidnapped without if the economy. We see fighting each other. Yeah. So I think we need to educate the people that stop fighting each other. And begin you have to do like five things at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we have to first of all let them know that you can't be fighting each other. Education, uh, we, we have to Africa. start with educating them. I mean, like, okay, like, obviously Africa is not like one, you know, monolith culture. We have like, right, we have, we, we have like a million right, ca- languages and language. language. Right. Ish, culture, so, so many different things. So, like, whatever works in East Africa is not necessarily what's going to work in Nigeria. Ah, right. right. Because, like, cause, like for one, here's an example, like, with the Astra- West Africa, um, like, in the case of Nigeria, like, the whole religion thing is like 50 50. Right. Man. Christian yeah. and, and is Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and you compare that to Kenya, uh, the reason Kenya has like almost non-existent like uh you know like religious fights or anything mm-hmm. is because like uh Muslims Islam is like less than twenty percent. Mm-hmm. It's very same it's very with Congo, yeah. yeah. Same with Cameroon. One percent, I believe, not yeah. even point five. Mm, same with Cameroon. Too. And the thing is, also like in Kenya, like you don't have one huge like tribe that controls everything. It's like. Mm. Kiku is the, like Kiku is the biggest tribe in Kenya, but it's only seventeen percent. Mm-hmm. Then you have other like eleven, ten, nine. So we have like it's spread out. It's spread right. out. Yeah, it's uh, like, kind like, of balanced. Yeah, like in Nigeria, you have Yoruba, you have Igbo, you have all these. Yes, things. Yoruba, you, Igbo, and Aguza like the biggest so tribes yeah, in Nigeria. Yeah, like basically, the, are just like the three of them call the shots on like almost eighty percent of everything. And everything though. Yeah, when it comes from entertainment to, to, to yeah. the government to ev- yes. everything is Yoruba. So Nigeria, now Aguza. look. We lived in peace and harmony before the terrorists. If you look at the case of Sierra Leone, Mm -hmm. Christian and Muslim, the mayor in my country is the same. I believe in Kenya is the same. Where did this problem of terrorism and religious conflict came from? We never had it in Africa. I mean, yeah, like we never had it in Africa. That that whole problem with uh, like strict interpretation of um, the Quran or in some instances like, you know, uh, the Bible, it's a new situation. It's a new phenomenon. It started like uh, the Quran started in the seventies with the Wahhabism from Saudi Arabia, where they started like creating schools uh, where like interpreting the Quran is like, if it says kill infidels, you go kill infidels. <laughs> There's no interpretation like so, except for that. So this religious war, can we say it's a borrowed war to Africa? So what? Is it, is it a borrowed war to Africa? Yeah, it's not from Europe because look. Yeah, it's. I mean, 
before the whole like a uh, Berlin conference thing, mm -hmm. we never. I mean, obviously, I only know how we used to live, but there was obviously fights. Of, of course. Yeah, like between d different tribes. Obviously, it was low key because we didn't have guns. <laughs> yeah. But like, we really didn't have conflicts such as religious conflict. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't have like re like each tribe has had its own religion, but we didn't fight about who's their correct religion. Right. So like the whole idea of religion is also another borrowed situation because. Like in Nigeria, you can have your brother who's Christian and your another brother who's Muslim, Muslim but yeah. they're fighting 24 7 and they're from the same tribe. That's borrowed. Nigeria is a really good case study to look at how destabilized so Africa is. The yeah. religion was brought Nigeria to us by Congo. colonizers. Yeah, really good case studies. Hmm? yeah the religion yeah. is. It, Those of survival. us were colonized by British, French, whatever, they brought their religion. Mm -hmm. If you look at North Africa, <coughs> Middle East, they brought their religion and culture, and that's where it came from. Have you noticed like some of these uh, most some of the most developed countries in the world are not religious at all? We live in the United States. Don't we live in America. Go right to now? church in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't we live in America right now? <laughs> you see, it's empty. They, a lot of atheists and nobody's fighting. Not Americans by them. It's usually immigrants that bring that. No, you but know? no, America is just full of crap by itself. <laughs> Forgive my language. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I mean, like. America, like, yeah, some aspects, like, if you go to, like, some of the most developed and richest cities, you know, like San Francisco, New York, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. religion is non-existent. Right. But then you go to the backward Mississippi, Alabama, God knows what. <laughs> <laughs> Minneapolis, <laughs> Detroit. I mean, like, even Minneapolis, Minneapolis is okay because... Minneapolis like, is kind of okay. Yeah, we have yeah. a lot of churches, but it's not that religious. Right. But you go to Alabama, it, like, Sunday is its own holiday. Church is everything, but those guys are super broke. Same thing, like, you look, you, look, you, look, you look at the U.S. in general, religion, yes, is falling. But per capita, this country is still way broke compared to Norway. Mm -hmm. And yes. Norway is, like, yes. I don't think they have been religious. They, they their GP you know what, what I, I think I can, I can always, like, this is an opinion for me. Yeah. I feel like religion comforts laziness. Oh, yeah. Because when you look at Africa, like a case study for this religion part, you will see that there are a lot of people in Africa that will just say, oh, you know what, God is going to provide at the right time. Uh, so they don't really take the bull by the horns. They don't really go out there and push hard. They just believe it's going to happen. They take so comfort you, in that. Yeah, you have to understand, you have to go back to history. Religion was a tool that was used to colonize us. Mm -hmm. The yeah. European brought the Bible mm -hmm. and told us that Close our eyes to pray and we walk up the t well, that's one of the <laughs> you know <laughs> analogy. Let's focus on let's focus on security. Right. Yeah. Religion is a whole other topic. That's right. a very vast topic. If we go into yeah. that right now, we're not gonna be able to dissect but, but even security. Pe even peace and security, like religion plays a big part of it's, it. It's a very big part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Like religion in education, um I know we don't talk, talk about religion, but imagine like if we Oh, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> imagine if you remove the whole religion aspect of like the typical millions of fights and mm -hmm. skirmishes across Africa. Boko Haram wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. ISIS from Somalia wouldn't exist. Uh, like Al Shabaab. Al Shabaab. They will not exist. At all. Whatever groups are out there. So I even heard in in Zambia, there's a new group of terrorists now too. Yeah, I mean, are they Christian? No, Zambia. They have some Islam terrorists going on there recently. Yeah. So like you like you remove like you remove like for the sake of peace and security in Africa, like it's kind of a hard topic to dissect by itself just because there's so many it's like an octopus there's like so many different tentacles depend like if you want to maintain peace and security for one you gotta have like you need to have like an established military system where basically <coughs> like in the u.s you know like you have these guys proud boys whatever mm -hmm. yeah they can talk and talk and talk but if they actually go against the government itself they'll be crushing less, less than a like five hours yep of yeah. course it's not even gonna take five hours yeah it's yeah. got yeah so like for one in africa we need to have like a for peace and security you need to have like an established military system where <coughs> the soldiers themselves the airmen the sailors all these people and for one they're not corrupt that's one of the biggest reasons china will definitely lose a war with the u.s because the chinese military system is super corrupt it's like russia's everybody who thought russia russia the russian system is like you know it's like this big bad wolf whatever but now they're getting crushed by a small country called ukraine mm -hmm. so like you have like a really good uh, but a quick question on that though okay. on this russia ukraine war you know it's just a side note it doesn't really affect us that much but anyways yeah. a lot of people are arguing that the west media is just portraying a part that they want to portray that russia is actually like dealing with ukraine very badly right now no that the west is media is pushing that narrative just to keep people confused <coughs> is, no. that, is that true yeah it's true they're actually doing really bad because i'm 
so I have a VPN. I kind of read news from different aspects. Yeah, because it's, it's also kind of part of my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I read mm -hmm. different news mm -hmm. from all over the places. And if you read the news from Belarus, which is like a Russian ally, mm -hmm. they are like they're, they're even like Jesus Christ, what's going on? Because Russia, like the the Russian equipment is really old. Yeah, I they, heard that they are really corrupt. You know, like these, like interception of communication like uh, basically uh, signals whatever between the commanders and different yeah. people mm -hmm. like soldiers are just like looting some are even quitting some are even injuring themselves deliberately so they can go back home damn so russia is just yeah, losing yeah so back to the peace and security stuff in, Af in africa you need yeah. to have a military that's not like russia's <laughs> or china and, 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 and i think right now we probably have the worst even if we were to come together and be like okay let's have one african military i think it's gonna be the worst i was gonna bring yeah. that question can a does the au has an army Bro, like just keep au out of this conversation <laughs> au is like the, the most the, the, the worst organization i've ever seen is au but uh, i mean like when it comes to security like they're actually doing a good job there's like really? a, they yeah. have au has a military base not a military base but like they have Would it be AUs if AU had a military base? No. <laughs> I was about to say, I've never heard. So the EU has this, what, what is called like a regional... Uh, oh, like SADAC. A regional, oh. uh, so yeah. So technically they call regional economic organizations, but right. each region, Ecoas, but each region, has, each region has its own military system. So like all these, like, so in East Africa, we have the East African standard by, standby force, which is in a, an actual military by like, before uh, Congo joined, was like, you have like, pretty much soldiers come together pretty much twice a year to you know like all those kind of things together mm -hmm. so uh west africa has the same thing um uh, it's called a uh, west african ECOWAS. yeah it's yeah it's a uh, ECOWAS. the but block is ECOWAS. Yeah, yeah but the military organization is called west african standby force okay so now that congo is part of east africa guess what like the m23 that's what they're m23 yeah. yeah that's what they're, they're m24 m24 so that uh, those guys now they are like in a crosshairs with, with some of the region's biggest guns. Kagai, like uh, Rwanda is a small country, but it punches above its weight like crazy. It has like one of the most professional militaries in in, in Africa. Yes, in East Africa, yeah, not in, in Africa. In Africa, the biggest one is Nigeria. I'm saying, oh, no, 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 not the size. The oh, most size. professional, professional, professional. yeah, okay, professional. Okay, yeah, it's okay. like I think it's like if it's not the top, it's one of the top three. Uh -huh. Then you start adding like uh, Uganda and like what are they called? UPDF people, like, you know, mm -hmm. the military service mm -hmm. in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Kenya has weapons for days. Then Tanzania <laughs> has, <laughs> ta like, those rebel groups, like, they are, like, literally, they are going to be wiped out real soon. Because it's not, like, now, it's not one country so now. Because, like, initially, a long time ago, not a long time ago, a few, before Congo joined, if Congo fought these guys, they will run to Uganda. Right, or oh, Rwanda, because we share a or border. Rwanda, yeah. Or Tanzania, if you look at that region, sorry to cut you, it's in the East Africa, Goma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You go on the east side, it's Rwanda. You go on the west side, it's Uganda. You go in the south, it's Tanzania. Yeah. So they have options. But you attack them from Rwanda, they go to Uganda. You attack them from Uganda, they go to Tanzania. So it's, you know. But after a few days after Congo joined, they had a pact where they were like, okay, like any country that borders Congo mm -hmm. can actually combine with Congo forces and chase, like they can actually come into Congo to fight those guys. Yes. And well, like that's something I was about to propose, if you, if you yeah, know, yeah, and, and the Congo guys, like uh, the Congo military, can actually chase those rebels into either Uganda or Rwanda, right. whatever. Because without, before uh, without, we didn't have that, yeah, uh, without concerns for like you know, like a uh, national border, wait for them yes. to open and yeah. sign all of because that. Because yeah. those people, they you guys just they need to map that area, cut it out like that, and just let yeah. all the militaries around there just. Close in the whole lines. country uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the region where it's most destabilized that, that's that's the next m best move like th not the best move that's the actual next move that's such a, supposed to be happening in the next few years okay is like have the bulk of like uh in each country individual country mm -hmm. station at the borders okay. so they start pushing in together chances are those guys the, those guys will be forced to whatever countries in the north of congo I don't right know which one is it the, 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 the only bandundu in the northern part yeah like uh, the country that's on top of congo Sudan. Sudan. So those guys will be forced into Sudan and Sudan doesn't take prisoners. <laughs> so, so they will go. They will they eventually catch them. Yeah. They, yeah. Because that will be the only. Because if they try worse, they're going now. Angola, mm -hmm. Kinshasa will capture them. Yeah. You know, Kisangani will capture them. So that's the most stabilized country because the one region Just shares. Like all of the, the countries around that area close up. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the thing like, Boko, like Nigeria is, is screwing up because it's like Boko Haram is like in the like in the middle of like four countries. 
But all these countries have so much bureaucracy they can't combine their power, manpower, right. to crush right. these guys at the same time. So Nigeria is going to push these guys to this corner. The rebels, Boko Haram, will go to a different country. Yeah. Yeah. The, the That's what they were doing in Congo. But the BIR, the, BIR, the BIR in Cameroon always like try to fight them up or yeah. not. Yeah. They are holding them up. There. They are really doing a good job so far. Yeah. They are really holding them not to come down towards the, the center of Cameroon, like towards Yaoundé. So they're keeping them so before we can but talk. like they need to like combine forces like yeah they should they should combine forces with nigeria but one thing to when you even look at nigeria anyways it's gonna be hard for nigeria to like think like that because nigeria already first have so many internal problems <laughs> yeah yeah uh, you know they, they still have the they have, they have that the biafra war it's oh still, that, yeah that's biafra still, war that's, that's still another one thing in cameroon what is yeah, i mean in biafra? Nigeria, sorry like I, you I, know i've never understood about biafra war well, what was it about like it was supposed they to be want to be a country they, no biafra is like they want they want to cut out and be a country of uh, it's like own. djibouti used to be part of somalia that's what they want you know how eritrea used to be part of ethiopia yes biafra want to be, to be the be country, country but like who who like are they like uh, are they like on top of the uh, the Delta region? I think they are north. They are northerners. But then they don't have resources. They just have trees. <laughs> <laughs> they still want to be left alone. Yeah. <laughs> so all I alone. know Honestly, is I don't really Biafra know much where the re region is. So yeah. that's something I will just have to learn from Jean Paul. Yeah, yeah. Biafra. Yeah, yeah. Biafra. They want to be a country. They but have I, their I, own the leader. leader in, in Kenya not long ago. Yeah, so like Kenya basically just handed, handed the man out. Yeah, like hey, this is not our problem. Take him, take him. <laughs> so, yeah. I've had a lot of people reach out to the Africa is Home Global platform on Facebook. Like you guys should do something on Biafra. Maybe that's something we should consider. Like having yeah, an it's something. Yeah, we need to do our research. If anybody yeah, out there Biafra. knows information, to about let Biafra. us know. We'll yep. do research Please and we can talk about us. it. Yeah. yeah, because that's something that's really keeping Nigeria really a, a, a little bit super divided right now. Yeah, yeah yeah like you so know like the whole like i mean the whole topic is you know political not political like uh sec peace and security mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like what i was talking about like with the whole uh m24 m23 mm -hmm. i don't know why even called 24 what's up with the number but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so like uh so the whole like you know like it's a catch-22 like i mentioned earlier you know like you gotta have peace and security before mm -hmm. economy develops and you uh, you also need to have social stability mm -hmm. yes. for peace and security to happen yes it's like it's like you know like a trifactor of three different things that need so to happen to at the same me, time there's two major things that we need to do urgently what is that economically and peace and security like you're saying mm -hmm. right because those are the two things killing africa because right now look if europe cut us off we are done medical even some i mean we'd learned that the hard way during COVID. like all these european we, we were not done though huh during COVID, that was like no listen that was COVID. COVID was a new virus we nobody had an idea how but to treat the west where the, the, the west virus still left us on our own at that time yeah yeah like there was pretty much like got all these different like vaccination and they told africa hey you go go, go figure your own stuff out yeah R but but here's the thing too we were not affected as much as the west what i'm saying is medical supply wise the me the aspirin you take from Africa is not made in Africa. It's made somewhere in China, in Canada, or in the US, or in Europe. Oh, we in, uh, import India. them. Yeah, or India. We import them medical supplies. We import them. Okay. Some food, even wheat. Now they're saying there will be wheat shortages because we're super because reliant on Ukraine and stuff like that. That's exactly. the thing. We rely That's so much saying. on the West that so and, and other countries. Economy is the key. Farming. We have to bring back our engineers. <laughs> and smart people like you of course don't know much about this stuff about security to go back and, and and i feel like we need an international agency in africa like the interpol europe we need something it's, like that i mean the thing is like like it's all uh, i mean mostly okay i don't know about like uh, the internal structures of some of most of these countries but i'll give you an example in kenya mm -hmm. kenya right now like you tell somebody like hey do you want to go to the u.s and walk they'll be like why i can walk here that's the mentality right now they do that in Kenya right now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been getting like oh, my nice. my brother wanted to uh, like I we tried getting my brother to come to this country. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, that that is not happening in Cameroon yet. <laughs> I'm good. That is, <laughs> Unfortunately, oh man, everybody wants to leave that. Leave, leave know, people want to come here for yeah. work. I mean, yeah, like you know. Plus, also depends on your background. You know, like mm -hmm. in Kenya. Okay, here's an example. The whole idea of like having internet all over the place. Kenya is like I think the second most connected country in african middle east oh nice so like everybody has a smartphone a laptop whatever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they r actually read the news uh, like especially when the whole like idea of racism and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. they see stuff that's happening in the u.s they're like yeah i mean like you guys are making good money but at least can like at that. least in kenya if i get shot peaceful, back yeah i won't get shot if i get pulled by police yeah in kenya yeah. be like if, if a police shoots me i'm like 
I probably screwed up or they're probably, you know, I they're probably I broke and they want to take my money. Yeah. But in the US, they will shoot you because you're black. You know, yeah. so like, that's the thing. To add to what you just said, sir, one, one of the things too, that I always say is when you've lived in both the two wars, you really see the difference. Yeah. Because for me, I didn't really experience racism until I came to America. Same thing. Oh, and my us. first what time, us? it was we so know bad that like, I was black. shaking. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I, I was so mad. I went to a restaurant. It, I was watching Champions League. Then I, I went to the bathroom. Before I came, everybody that was there was looking for me. Why? Because the, the waiter said probably I ate and I, and I ran out or something like that. I yeah, dine and deep. Yeah. yeah. So I, I came back in like even the people the people that were around it were like were, were walking around. Yeah, know. like what's going on? I here? was yelling yeah. at the top of my lungs. Jeez. Yeah. So have you ever been followed at the store? You go shopping, maybe like a Walmart or you know any store, and they follow you. They I've think not, I've you not seen that yet. Oh, I have. You've been followed. I have been followed in the store. I'm Just not seen to like make sure I'm not stealing, or <laughs> no, it, it's frustrating. Imagine if Congo was as developed, or even more developed than this country. After that experience, would you want to stay here? Absolutely. You would not, not even be here to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. If it was that developed, I would have and never left my country. I love my people. I love my place. I feel free when, when I'm home. So, in and order I mean, for us to be to the point where you're saying developed, mm -hmm. there are key things that we need to do in Africa in order to get there. Mm -hmm. First, like you say. Peace and security and stability. That, Econ important. Economy. Economically. Yeah. We have resources. We have human resources. We have natural resources. So what do you think is the problem? Poor leadership? Uh, definitely. Africa lacks leadership big time. Absolutely. I mean, <coughs> with the exception of a few presidents, like uh, the ex-president of Namibia, I think. Or was it Botswana? Got it there. I forgot. Yeah, I think it was Botswana. Are you sure it's Zambia? Because I know the president of Zambia was a really nice gentleman and he did a lot of good for his people. Zambia. President Ka Ka Kachwera, I forgot. That gentleman that was walking down what, the street. What were you saying? What were yeah, okay. So I was saying like uh, Africa lacks leaders. Yes. You have like, if you, ha okay, here's an example. 30 years ago, Rwanda was a piece of crap. <laughs> After the they whole depended genocide. on Congo. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's the vice versa. Vice versa. Like, if you have like multiple like you know, say like uh, five, you know, five or six presidents in a region all like behave the same way as Kagame or like even Kibaki, mm -hmm. you know, um, with the whole idea of like their whole goal is like, okay, cool, we can have democracy, mm -hmm. but not right now. Because if I give you, it's like, give, if I give you guys democracy, it's like giving a kid a pair of scissors to run around with. Mm -hmm. So democracy, you're going to. If it's a school thing, if you want to vote for each other in classes or <laughs> companies, <laughs> go for that. But national development and agenda comes first. Yeah. Same thing as uh, here's something that people don't realize. In South Korea, once upon a time in the 60s and 70s, Kenya was richer than South Korea. Yes. Hmm. Even Singapore. Yeah, hmm. Ke Kenya was one of the most developed countries in the world. In, in the, the 70s, I remember in Nairobi. There used to be people sweeping the streets yeah. like they do here. Yep. I was a little boy. I would have been 9, 10 years old in Nairobi, 1997. And the thing is... It was like, one of the cleanest cities in Africa, yeah. Do you know how... Do you know the biggest screw-up Kenya did? Basically, Kenya and um, South Korea kind of followed the same process. Mm -hmm. South Korea had a dictator. He was... The dictator was, like, focused on, you know, like, uh, bringing up the country. Mm-hmm. In Kenya, we had Moi. His focus was to get, get as much power as possible and be as rich as possible. <laughs> the difference. <laughs> see, see, both are dictators. <laughs> yeah. Different mindset. Both are dictators. But only one of them had a brain. The other one was just concerned about his pocket. Exactly. Like, okay, in Africa, how many, uh, we have like, uh, who's the other dictator except for like a... Paul B. is a dictator. Oh, pfft. Paul Bia been in power before we were all born. That's a very bad dictator. What he's not even Cameroon. Okay, yeah. He's not even a good dictator. Yeah, he's, exactly. a, he's the one that is drowning the country. He took the country from like 100%. A good all dictator all that I would... So that's what I'm saying. Those are two dictators at the yeah. end of the day. Mm -hmm. But one of them is an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so so if you have like a dictator like that, like, um, like in the next... If Kagame had nothing happens to him in the next 20, 30 years, Rwanda will be like Switzerland. Honestly... I don't see anything wrong with him Kagame staying a little power. longer. Take you know what? Minutes. That's why we were going to discuss in a democracy. Yeah, we you should. Know? We, we, we People like him. That. What is he doing? He brought the country up. 
There's peace and stability in Rwanda than it's ever been <laughs> I mean, in the history of Rwanda. Democracy is overrated to countries that cannot govern themselves successfully. Even the US was not a pure democracy country at the beginning in the 1770s. Right. It was like a dictatorship in quotes but through George Washington and his, uh, his like cabinet. He led more than four years, right? You know what? Yeah. I'm even yeah. pro for Africa right no now. I don't even want democracy for Africa right now. I want dictators with brains. Like honestly, honestly, all this democracy thing is mainly honestly. giving a chance to people that cannot rule. To yeah. Look at power. example, people like Kagame, people like Gaddafi. He's a, a dictator, dictator that I mean, I was comfortable what with. he did in Libya. I mean, yeah, that's peace and security for you. You want to have to have peace and security. You need to have somebody that can call the shots on pretty much yes. almost everything. If you guys start fighting, it's going to come slap your faces to stop fighting. Like, he's going to enforce that peace. It's like mm -hmm. when you're kids, right? If you fight your brother, your mom is going to make you like sit together and solve your stuff up. And if you don't Correct. solve anything, nobody's going outside for the rest of the Nobody's week. eating. And yeah, you guys are going to sit right in that room. Yeah, you guys solve your stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what Rwanda has been doing. If you're on political stability and security in Africa, you have to have somebody who's going to enforce that first. Because like now we start talking about like having economic stability and social stability. But then you throw democracy in the mix. People are going to like, obviously people are going to resist that. People are gonna say like, okay, like, cool, yeah, we want. Uh, I wanna get along with him, but first, I need to get something from him. And he's gonna say the same thing. I wanna be at peace with you, but first, I need to get something from same you. Something from you. Like basically, we're gonna keep on going back and forth. There will never be stability. But then, if I, I say the same thing to you and you say the same thing to me, then somebody comes out there and say like, okay, you know what? Nobody's getting nothing. You guys get along right now. If you don't, mm -hmm. nobody's getting shit. No, no, nobody's getting shit. You guys are getting out of here empty hand. Yeah, exactly. So that's the problem with the, like uh, political stability. And the biggest thing in Africa is the whole. I mean, even on top of social, uh, social and economic situations, mm -hmm. I would say democracy is one of the biggest failures for political stability because so. you give people to you give people a chance to. Do something dumb. Yeah, they will definitely do something. They will dumb. do something dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone is smart. You see, so last week we had um, uh, uh, Doctor uh, Antonio and and Mr. Sechi. Absolutely. When we were talking to them, we also like bring up this uh, concern of foreign companies and foreign investors not re not really going to Africa. They both uh, 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 they, they they both talked about how unstable the territory is. So I feel like even if we are gonna have this conversation about economical stability or political stability, it's impossible without security first mm -hmm. because. Someone with a foreign company right here, let's say Ford, for example, they want to cut their production in China and take it to Africa, yeah. right? They're not going to do it because if you plant this company somewhere and tomorrow, boom, a civil war. There's yeah. a Boko coup. Haram, boom. Or yeah. there's a everything coup. changes. Uh, they like lose. A, you get an unstable dictator and nationalizes yeah. everything. And, yeah. they, and, and, and there you go, boom, your company disappears. Yeah. 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 So before we even get to that point where we can say, okay, we have economical stability. We have we to have be to sure that if I take security. this my $50 million dollars and plant it in Nairobi, yeah. Yeah. it's going to actually grow and stay there for decades and decades and yes. serve the purpose that I was planting. That is one of the biggest problems that investors multinational investors have have with africa because they, they won't look at the country they love the territory yeah right country like congo we have a lot of natural resources you think there's no investors that can go and invest but yeah. they are looking at the, the country's stability no, the, the country the, 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 only, the only investors that will come in a certain situation like that is like investors that want to take advantage of the country not yeah. work with the country mm -hmm. right me i keep on looking at kenya i'm like i don't know what's up with kenya it's a really weird situation because we haven't had coups or anything and <laughs> it's like no honestly one of the peaceful country ghana kenya senegal yeah yeah in the in the sub-saharan and if you south africa kenya is doing decent i don't even wish coups for kenya even though like I i've hear never a lot heard of, yeah yeah, yeah they're like doing decent i mean obviously there's been tribal skirmishes here and there but nothing major usually like, after election yeah, yeah like like yeah i was gonna go to kenya this year i'm not going because <laughs> election uh, is coming <laughs> election is in august i have a friend of mine that wants to run for council ship in uh in nairobi Councillor? Yeah, he wants to be like. Uh, he I told have family like members, like for, but you know, for city council something like that in Nairobi, uh, uh, Mr. Joseph. Okay, I mean, good luck. This so, yeah. so that I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's a very. <laughs> it's that's it's Nairobi. Problem. Everybody wants a piece of that. So everybody wants a piece of that. So like, there's gonna be. Yeah, he's a very. He's a nice gentleman. I like him a lot. We 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 started we started a factory in Nigeria in in, in Nairobi. Is that a factory? Yeah, under Africa is home. A detergent factory there. Oh, nice! It's yeah. a whole company. Eh? Oh, nice! Oh, yeah, yeah. Africa is almost a, a whole organization. 
Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Just, this that. is just a po- podcast part. Oh, nice. So you're yeah. a busy guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we're very busy. Oh, we wow. do a lot of charity under here and a lot of different things in African countries. Oh, man, that's but one awesome. of the highest things we really fear is the stability part because even us yes. investing in Africa, we are, we are scared. That's the Doing thing. You can say, places. okay, I want to start a, a small business, mm-hmm. investors come and like that. No, that country is not stable. Yeah. If I invest my money, I don't know what's going to happen what, in the, 24, happen? the next 24 hours. You can't might be a you can't, you can't Look the at the people that invested in Mali or, or, or Chad. In 24 hours, their life turned upside down. In 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. The we, loss, the that's the problem we are facing in Africa. I'm kind of curious who invested in Mali because unless it's a foreign government that's <laughs> trying to steal stuff, <laughs> I'm not hating on Mali. I love the country. No, yeah. it's reality. It's not a matter of hating. It's, it's reality. reality. I can invest in Mali. That's something about you me. Know, when, I, when, I, when I'm trying to carry these this investments under this platform, mm-hmm. I don't even look at stability. Yeah. I just look at like, okay, these are my people. I love them. I'm going to go in there regardless. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm losing money, a lot of money. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. Yeah. Sometimes you got to think about your wallet. But we still go right in there. At the end of the day, because at the end, we I gotta mean, leave an example. If you know, those are people going invest in Mogadishu, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's your whole idea. Like, I love my people, I'm gonna invest. <laughs> I'm still gonna do it regardless. <laughs> Impossible. Yeah. First of all, it's very well, it's a nice country, beautiful country, but it's not stable. Attacks after you never know what's gonna happen, happen in next before, hour. Before, in 19, before 1991, when uh, the civil war started. Somali was like one of the most powerful countries in the world. Mm, like yes. it was like there was no enforcement of you know putting all this religious stuff. Mm-hmm. But after 1991, I think that's na- Black Hawk Down. I wanna say after that attack, yeah, Somalia has never known peace to this day. And, and, and do you know why? Probably for this territory anyway. No, no, like Somali, uh, they have so. Oh, Somalia is a rich country. They have oil, huh? No, like okay, Somalia is the other thing I actually read about like a few days ago. What was like people keep on thinking Somalia is like you know they keep on fighting themselves or whatever. Yeah. True, there's always gonna be you know, like uh, this kind of drama regardless of the country. Mm-hmm. But like Somali's most disservice was by the United Nations. Basically, like having United Nations missions in Somali enforced the whole idea of lawlessness. Now you have need to you need outside help by the West to support the lawlessness, uh, to sub, to prevent the lawlessness. Mm-hmm. So they you end up having like Somali people watching people come in and they're like, No, 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 man, this is my land. I'm gonna fight with you. So they start fighting the United Nations. The United Nations start kept on sending more peacekeepers. So it became back and forth, back and forth. Then you start having different uh, uh, clans taking side uh, the side of the United Nations. Some want the United Nations to go. So now the clans start fighting themselves. Each other. Yeah. So see, do <sighs> this observation. Any country in Africa that has UN, UNICEF. There's never peace in those countries, so-called peacekeepers. It's the most unstable countries in the continent. You know, it's, it's Look always at my going country. back to how secure Africa yeah. should be. Because when they send these people, they're flying there with their flags. I'm, 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 I'm United Nations, I'm UNICEF. You don't know what is behind those flags, for real. Yeah. Which is for they us are there as to Africans protect, to, to really protect dissect the them and see what is in there. of the West. They are not there to help you and me. That's for me and you to, to uncover. Yeah. Africa will never be at peace up until we stop relying on external people. Like That's exactly what I was saying. Even African Union is, tu- is toothless because most of the budget comes from the West. Or the, the, uh, UN. the whole building, first of all, was built by China. was bugged. That's China a, was that's, listening that's, that's, to that's every a, that's, communication. That's a very sad situation. China and the West financed them, so they can't say anything. So if today they are voting to maybe ban Russia or do whatever to Russia, all they have to do is call AU. Hey, you are siding with us, period. No questions asked. That's Done. A, I mean, like, you, ha- you had a whole bunch of diplomats from the West coming to Africa and asking them, like, hey, man, you guys need to support us, you know, yeah. like, against Russia. They voted to, to remove them on, a, on, a, on a, what was it? Um, uh, Security Council. Um, <coughs> no, it's not Security Council. United Nations um, Human something. Si- yeah. Humanitarian something. Something. Yeah. 40-something countries vo- voted f- for, right? They yeah. sided with the way I, f- I think it was Eritrea, few countries, less than 20. So basically, the only countries that actually voted was like 28 countries. Yeah. The, the rest, they either abstained or they voted for Cameroon ab- abstained. I yeah. know for a fact Cameroon abstained, but then South Africa went for. Oh, they, w- they, w- they voted so, so, in favor so of Russia instead. I think. Yeah, South oh, Africa okay. went for Russia. Mm-hmm. I think Djibouti or Eritrea and went Eritrea, for Russia. Eritrea, Russia. they were clear from the beginning they're supporting Russia. Yeah, Kenya yeah. just abstained the fa- the second time because the first time they voted for uh, condemning to condemn the Russians. Okay. Yeah. No, Kenya needs to stay away from this. 
They better be we abstain. all need to stay. This is uh, not our battle. It's, it's, it's we big all for us. need to stay because we are defenseless. You know, like because if we side with them, you know, Russia is gonna come for us, right? When all because of this is said and done, Russia don't even need to attack us as a military. Russia just needs to phone our, our our terrorist groups that are already disturbing us. Just give them the newest AK. AK. <laughs> Look, yeah. The, the dis- and torture us like yeah, that. The destabilization of Africa is a big business industry for the west i mean like exactly for capitalists okay. out here it's we, a very big we, without, without terrorists who do you think they will sell the guns to that was my that's, that's, that's always been my question from day one with yes. peace like with peace, it's a big industry with peace like the like some of these huge companies like northrop grumman or whatever like mm-hmm. they that make guns or whatever they're gonna go broke because like nobody's killing each other anymore that's one no country is no country is conflict no country is extensively buying weapon systems from the west anymore Mm -hmm. now there's peace in africa african people can actually trade with each other Mm -hmm. shoot like nobody's trading with europe yeah nobody wants your guns yeah so they have to keep their business open so they have to keep that's not right not at the cost of other it no, has to be fair it's and really square. not about what is right or wrong it's about what benefits them you understand what i mean yeah so it's for us as to africans to make sure that we are smarter and just stop all of this oh yeah, yeah. definitely to drop the guns and be like okay we don't want your weapons we're not gonna fight anymore we're done right we're done they're, they're not gonna take advantage of us if you think if america started a civil war right now where california is fighting these people these people will come right here and sell the guns they are business people that's what they do oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Until America gets to that point where they're like, okay, we're not gonna fight each other anymore. We're dropping the guns. Yeah, I've been in situations like those. Like uh, you're like, I know, I know you guys are gonna kill each other, but I still need my dollar. Back. My dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys keep on fighting. Fighting. Uh, These are the guns. Then you come later on, like, okay, who's winning? You're winning. Okay, I'm gonna sell him more guns so you can balance each other. Balance each other. So now the the big question: How can Africa achieve peace and stability? I'll say leadership. Like you have leadership like Kagame, Koza. Here's an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few years ago, like uh, the East African community, that was before South Sudan and mm-hmm. Congo. Mm-hmm. So there was this pact they need to... Before, uh, sorry to catch you, the South Sudan <coughs> joint? Yeah, it's part of it. Oh, it's part of it now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So like before South Sudan joined. Mm-hmm. So there was this pact uh, with the East African countries, like, hey, let's stop importing used clothes from the West. <laughs> Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like you know, cause like that's one of the biggest exports for. To it's killing the the clothing it's industry it's killing, in Africa. It's the yeah? local textile uh, mm-hmm. I- yeah, industry. So that was the idea. Then and then, <laughs> so the, so after a while, America was like, "Hey, you guys, you know, if you stop buying our stuff, our used clothes, sanctions. Then we're gonna not sanctions, but we're gonna kick you out of the preferable trade, which means basically you can sell stuff to the U.S. for without without tariffs." Mm-hmm. So. Most of the countries in the East Africa are like, okay, cool, okay, we're, all right, cool. We, we can still, we can go back and taking your crap, useless secondhand clothes mm-hmm. at the expense of our own people. Just don't keep, don't kick us out out of that professional uh, professional agreement. Agreement. Rwanda was like, oh, you gonna kick us out? Go for it. We don't care. Boom. A few years later, now Ra- Rwanda is one of the is getting to be one of the biggest countries when it comes to exporting their own clothes. Because they were like, oh, they told the West and the U.S. They were like, okay, we really don't care about your tariffs or not. Like, you know, whatever you do with your tariffs, that's your own business. We as Rwandans, we want to protect our own small industry, textile industry, mm-hmm. so we can start exporting these clothes. Now, even even Kenya and Tanzania buying clothes from te- from Rwanda. You know, we should take the bobo industry down <laughs> to Rwanda. Good idea. Which industry? Uh, it's, our, it's our clothing uh, it's company brand, here yeah, clothing in America. Brand. Yeah, take it to Rwanda. We should take it to Rwanda. Yeah, like Rwanda, That's like, and one of the biggest things, like, if you're a new company, mm-hmm. they will give you, like, they'll cut, like, you can go for, like, uh, almost 10 years without paying internal taxes. Oh, daddy, poor Kagami. Like <laughs> we love you. <laughs> We're going to take it to Rwanda. Look countries like Rwanda, and I heard registering for company in Rwanda, it's ours. Within hours, if not the next, the list the next day you yeah. get your certificate. It's like yeah, like out here I registered my company. Like I have two companies here, mm-hmm. so I registered them. Like uh, one I registered like on a Friday, so I thought like I'm gonna get like confirmation like next the following week. I got like an email the following day on a Saturday like hey here's your yeah. registration here's your something with this Africa as well. Yeah, within minutes. Yeah, 
come immediately. Right back, right Even down. the ERN number, I thought it was gonna take like a, a no, it doesn't. A few weeks. <laughs> it doesn't. It came like after two days. I was like, okay, I could yeah. have done this a long time ago. <laughs> that in Cameroon is a process of Just about two months. Two yeah. months to start a business, man. You, it's it's all about who you know. You don't even understand. I'm like like getting getting us. I don't it's even get it. Like I'll, I'll slap somebody in the office <laughs> if I go back now to Cameroon because you go there, you stand right there. <laughs> right? Yeah. You seeing the person that is supposed to sign his documents and give to you. You know what? They're they making want. calls. They're walking around on office you know hours. What you know what they want? Under the sun. You know what they want? <laughs> they want that little th- something I in mean, order for them to give you that stamp or that signature. Well, uh, Mr. Jampo, you ask about what we can do to step up security and stability in Africa, right? He said, mm-hmm. uh, I would say leadership, leadership. leadership, and I would second him with education. Yeah. Yeah, because I need people in Africa to understand that. Okay, because I using this example like the Biafra, all of these, uh, the, the 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 southern Cameroonian part, uh, part of Cameroon and um, yeah. Amazonian so called Amazonians and the uh, the French part mm-hmm. fighting with this language. I feel like this is more of an educational problem. I mean, okay, so the whole language thing, uh, like in, in that specific case, he is like me. You gotta have like one national language that unites the country. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, you can be this the exact same people, but dif- two different colonial languages. Mm-hmm. You now you're fighting each other for no reason. Yes. yes. Like in excuse, like in uh, in Kenya right now, mm-hmm. uh, the lingua franca is Swahili. Yeah. So like b- even before you know who like somebody's from what tribe, mm-hmm. you I mean like, like you gotta talk to them in Swahili. At the end of the day, it's you're like, like oh, Congo, yeah. I didn't know you're like from this tribe. Okay, whatever. You're still talking about Swahili. Swahili. Yeah. yeah so keep on going. So like uh, I have a few friends from like uh, from Congo, and I didn't even know they were from Congo because we started talking. We all talking, speak in Swahili. Yeah, we're yeah, just speaking Swahili. La 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 la. We're talking, we're talking, talking. Oh yeah, I'm from uh, Kivu. I'm, pro- Kivu I'm from Kivu I province. That, yeah. I was like, hold up, you're not Tanzania, okay? No, no, I'm from Congo. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's the that thing with West Africa. They don't have that lingua franca you know, language. Only they only two s- French or English. Only twenty percent of Cameroon speaks English. Yeah. The rest eight speaks French. I think the the, the French part already wanted us to adopt French. All yeah. of us like let's let's just try English out and use French as our our national language. But the English part was like no, this is the English part right now that still wants to be an independent country. It's just twenty percent of the country. I mean, so like see, I mean, in that case, the best thing is just like hey, you know what? No more la- national languages. <laughs> no, I feel like okay, yes, even at that right, just letting the people know deeply, like hey, you're not French. You're not English. You're not English. English. Yeah. You are Cameroonian. You're Cameroonian. Go look at the mirror. <laughs> Do you look French? You're not from France. Yeah. Yeah. So See. educating the people that, okay, this is not really our war. Why are we fighting over French and English? They're sitting back and laughing at us. Oh, they're fighting over our languages. Our languages. Look at these Africans. How stupid is that? And at the end of the day, like, uh, English is like w- one of the biggest languages. It's like the second biggest language in the world. And I um, like that uh, AU now adopted Swahili as the national language. I love that. Yeah, some even South Africa started teaching Swahili. South, South Africa, I heard Because I know Zambia I wish I already they speak. I didn't know. English and learn Swahili. At first, I, I met the mm-hmm. first Zambian. Zambia. Swahili. Kumbe Zambia Swahili. They speak Swahili even in Zambia. Zambia speaks Swahili too. Yeah, I didn't know that. I met a Zambian it recently. Just make yeah. it a continent national language, Swahili. Yeah. Because yeah, it's I mean, spoken in a few countries. Congo, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, it's Zambia. Like, it, has, it has more like Swahili speakers as a first language or second I mean, language. Like over I don't speak Swahili, but if yeah. you had to make it a, a, a continent national language, I'm in for it. I think they already yeah. did. It's oh, already. Yeah. I, I would love to do that. Yeah, they're already they're implemented. They're yeah. not enforcing it. They're enforcing let's, it. Let's, in let's do that. Let's so enforce. We it. talked about the how can we achieve the peace and stability in Africa. I I'll think yeah, like okay, like I'll say the big, the first one, which you need, like it's basically concrete to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Leadership. Leadership. Yes. Of you have a do. good leader. They will yes. enforce the whole I education system. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they will enforce the education yes. system. They will enforce. Yeah, they will enforce education. Yes. They, they will enforce the economy through trade and mm. everything yes. else. Yes. They will enforce security by like basically Absolute, holding yeah. holding people accountable to any damn decision they make. Yeah. So like. Yeah. And also, we have to solve the internal problems that we have, such as ethnic war that's happening in Amazonia and Congo. In all r- this, you know what? Minor for this war in Cameroon, right? It, it goes with leadership. I really second you on 100 percent on yeah. that. I support that point 100 percent because when this war started, all we needed from the president of Cameroon, Mr. Paul Bia, was a statement. Yeah, the English part, all they needed was for Paul Bia to travel there and hear to and, and, and listen to the problem of lawyers, yeah, and teachers. These were the people that were going on strike. It was oh, a strike because I didn't like, oh, yeah, because of the education system. system. They didn't like the education system, like, okay, why are you guys making us in the English part? 
forcing us at the level of higher in, uh, education institutions like ENS learn in French. They didn't like that. So they wanted it to be in English as it used to be before we, we, we united as one nation. Yeah. Then let, let it be English. Yeah, because we, before, you know, Cameroon was a two-state feder, feder, federation country, right? Before yep. we came and, and yep, together. <laughs> so That's why you have Douala in Yaoundé. No, no. It, it was more of B Bamenda and uh, more of Northwest and Southwest, which is Bamenda, of course, and Boya. Mm. And the neighbor village around this area, they were like a state. Then the rest of Cameroon was the other state, okay. the rest of the French side. So it was a two-state federal country. Mm. But then uh, we decided to merge together. And so since it was the, the reunification of Cameroon now, gradually the French part of Cameroon mm -hmm. just kept on taking over like the, 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 all the system, the justice system, the educational system, mm. changing things. So lawyers and, 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 and teachers were like, no, this has to stop. So they went out on strike. <coughs> mm -hmm. All they needed from the president of Cameroon was to be concerned about his country. Yeah. Pobia, all he had to do was get into a car, drive down to, 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 to the Northwest region of Cameroon, have a conversation with these people face to face and talk to your people like their leader. I mean, like, okay. My man took his flight to Switzerland. Of course, what do you think? <laughs> they are sleeping on He left the continent entirely. And then yeah. why he went to Switzerland? A lot of people still in Cameroon are uneducated. People are out there that are uneducated. They took like to taxi drivers, bike riders in the city. That is it. That is how. Okay, let me like, okay, we want complete separation. Okay, let me ask you because I think that's another thing that can actually work out positively for Africa. Because like you have so many different tribes, so many different uh, not religions, tribes and languages and ethnicities, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. The idea was like if East Africa became a country, it's gonna be a federal country. Like it's like every different country has basically the whole federation will be only be in charge of things like uh, like say the budget, financial, defense policy. Why can't Cameroon have a situation like that where you have the English guys speak, keep on speaking whatever you wanna speak, mm -hmm. French guys keep on speaking whatever you wanna speak, mm -hmm. but like a federal system, a federal system. Yeah, basically well, like a really strong federal system. Federal, uh, very, yeah, like the American federal system, yeah. a really strong one like that. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. that was what we had before we united. I don't know who brought that unification thing on the table. <laughs> that person was the dumbest person that has ever done anything for Cameroon. I mean, like these are two regions with their own like distinct. This system is not only gonna work for Cameroon; it can work for all African countries. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Your tribe, Yoruba, you are mm -hmm. a federal state now. Yeah. yeah. Awuza, you are a federal state now. But yeah. we have a strong federal. Yep. Whoever is fighting for Biafra, you guys come together and make a federal state. Yes. Yes. I mean, Nigeria is already a federal state, but it's like a federal state on like, I don't know how they... But they have Igbo like, states. Like the way the British partition them, I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah, still I like that system. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how that works. But okay, see, but okay, that's another problem. Okay, like, I understand uh, federalizing like, uh, you know, like, you, like different languages and stuff mm -hmm. like that. What I'm saying is like, if you federalize a state like that, it's going to be like Ethiopia. Where you have like different uh, Ethiopian federal like uh, states inside Ethiopia are based on tribes. Right. Yeah. That's or Roma states, be. yes. It, that's how it should be. It, that is the, the simplest way to really bring so much yeah. stability in Africa right now. Yeah. Because if you look at Ethiopia, right, this is a recent war that almost like that, that was anticipated to be one of the most greatest massacres. In, uh, it's of still the going on, yeah. by the way. Right. Right. It has reduced drastically. It has, it, reduced. It has reduced, right? You will see that most of the the complaints that were coming from this was more of okay this our tribe these our people have been quiet we don't really have a say in the government yeah mm -hmm. that should be a state because if you are from a tribe like that you should have a representative on that table up there that's what we mm -hmm. talked about and you should right. be a who state the, the, the war is the, okay my tribe is not represented Zented. because the tigrinya the one ruling amhara amhara is not happy okay Let's have representative of each tribe go to the parliament, parliament. and represent their tribes. As What's the problem in their village? Dead. We need streets. We need roads. Okay, send our representative. But you do realize that's a slippery parliament. slope to like as uh, countries, you know, like dividing successions. Because <coughs> if you have like a, I'll give you an example in in Belgium, you have two major ethnicities. It's basically it's one country like Cameroon, mm -hmm. like yeah, Wallon and Flama. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's like. But uh, but like there's no federal system. It's like just two like right. two separate right. entities of the uh, the country mm -hmm. that they all speak the different languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now they're talking about like dividing the country. So Cameroon might end up might, like if you we like, saw it in look, Sudan. The yeah. truth about Cameroon is we would have never gotten to this idea of dividing the country, yeah. right? If we had maintained a two-state 
uh, federation country. I mean, because even when this situation was escalating, a lot of people proposed that. Mm -hmm. the people, uh, that is where most of the leaders of Amazonia were at. They were like, okay, let's have the back the two-state federation, the federal country. Yeah. Then they sent the Minister of uh, Communication. It was uh, Isa Choroma Bakari at that time. I, I don't know if he's still the Minister of Communication, Communication Cameroon. He went there to negotiate with these people. But these people had their crazy agenda again in the back doors. They wanted to create a 10-state federal country. 10. 10. <laughs> where like, every region in Cameroon had its, its own state. But then now we look at it and we're like, okay, if we are going to have a 10-state federal country, which means the English part of Cameroon is still going to be the two-state, what is the difference between a regions and a 10-state federal country? Because it, what, they, they, what, whatever they had drafted for this meeting mm -hmm. still basically maintained everything. Just that the name was supposed to change from uh, uh, Northwest region to the Northwest state. It was just the name. How stupid do you guys think we are? Just, it's just nice makers. So that is something that could really work for a lot of African countries, you know? <coughs> Because even at that, when you mention the monarch system, uh, Mr. Jean Paul, right. you're going to see that a king is still part of our governance system in, in Cameroon. Absolutely. Even those, most of the, in, I mean, in Africa, even, even Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Africa, yeah. Nigeria, South but Africa, Uganda. Most of the times, we, we always like put them aside when we're talking about generally uh, the, 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 in the grand scheme of things about the go governance of, the, of, of the Africa, right? Mm -hmm. So, what if a, 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 a tribe like Yoruba with a king in the could just represent that tribe as a state in the Nigerian federal system. I mean, that's a good idea, but that's not how, that's not the reality on the ground. But yeah. that will also reduce the problems drastically. I mean, like because the people of Nsoa now will hold our, will hold our phone accountable. I mean, like, you're the one going up the representing. What have you done so far? I mean, these are these are some really good ideas, but like <laughs> some of okay, let's say the example of Nigeria. You know, like this big this. These three tribes are like they're huge of themselves. Oh, they're right. really big. Then imagine having like a, a king or a prince from Yoruba and Igbo. They mm -hmm. start fighting. Or uh, they gang up together against the federal government. You think the government is gonna survive? The government will not survive. Exactly. Why wh why would they if they have a representative why would in, they? In, the, in the parliament and say, Okay, my people need this and this and the government is providing That's what this the United States works. It works. In the States, you know, when COVID happened. What the governor do? Okay, we need this and this. You, you saw in New York what happened. We copy what some happened. from the West. Why can't we copy this? Right. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. You think if, right? if, if, if so if use like Texas and Kikuyu California state, rise of the American government will survive. You have Kikuyu, Kamba state, you have Sijui, whatever state. Um, and then you have a parliament where every representative from these tribes comes in the, come parliament, the parliament to um, represent their state. I mean, that, that can actually work, but like it's it's not like easy like you guys are suggesting. Because like, know, it's not going to be easy. Because, okay, like, you have uh, in, in Kenya, like you have like Kikuyu and Kambas, they have like they're all over the place, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they are living in each other's lands. Mm -hmm. When do you say where the border is of like this one ethnicity versus the other ethnicity? Mm -hmm. That would be a potential for friction, yes. You know what? Let the sense. government partition the But lines. if we don't worry about that, let the lines so be partitioned by the government. But is, yeah, but here's the thing. But if the, if the government part if the government partitions the land, mm -hmm. then the representative from that tribe will say like, I don't know why the government is taking your side because this is clearly our land. And now, when, as, if, as of this moment, now we are against you, your tribe, and the government. There's still land conflict. Yeah. So there will be conflicts too. But because if the president keeps coming from the same tribe, the other tribe will complain. We've seen it in Kenya and Congo. It's like they have to be a uh, 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 turns. So you have Kikuyu this year. Next year must be Maasai. You have Maasai next this year. The next time. When there's a land conflict like that, right? Because mm -hmm. the government could just own the land. The federal government could just own the land. Okay, you're and fighting over this. You're fighting. You you can you can come to terms with that. Now 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 you're drifting towards the Chinese <laughs> communist stuff. Like, which let's just own the land. Let the federal no, government own the land. No, no, that's not gonna work. So you are telling the the king of Igbo that now your land is owned. No no, the, not all the land. No, just the borderlands where, where they are fighting. Oh, they are like pushing. like okay, uh, you just say oh, no, so, so like land, a, so like, like a DMZ demarcation zone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let the government yeah. own the demarcation zone. That's what I'm proposing <laughs> to maintain peace and let them also at least take a little piece of land from here. Tell them if you guys don't figure this out within the next two years, mm -hmm. the government is gonna actually invade your land a little bit and also yours a little bit up to this level. This side is gonna be a government land. What about like uh, if you just do like the way uh, Rwanda did, you know, like yeah, you know, like th there's already there's Hutus and Tutsis, right? Mm -hmm. But when applying for jobs, you mm -hmm. do not. I mean, that definitely is not gonna work in some places. Mm -hmm. But for when applying for jobs, you don't mention a tribe or anything. You basically like 
in Cameroon, but you know, as Africans, so we know each we, we by know names. names. In Cameroon, when you use names like the name, Tangana. we know just just <laughs> when we <laughs> see know you from the Beti tribe, you know that's the name they each other. <laughs> when I see your name, I know it's from this yep. tribe. We use the, the name Tangana. Hey, <laughs> even the name. It's you know it's so bad that people change their names to the Beti name in Cameroon just for them to get government jobs. Yeah, yeah. People they like grew up, and then when you want to make business tickets, because sometimes we make business tickets very late. Yeah. <laughs> they change their names. That's I why. Mean, like, but so how, like, really in the, in the, in the Cameroon situation, like, mm-hmm. how exactly? Cause, like, I'm still a proponent for, like, uh, you know, like, just get rid of democracy in the first place. I would really start. That's how that. I want to get rid of the <laughs> Western <laughs> version <laughs> of democracy will never work for Africa. We'll talk about this in the next topic. If it works, from my observation, years, yeah, ah, it will we have, never it, we, we have hundred centuries before we get there. Yeah, yeah. like so, it just get rid of that stuff to have political stability because. Yes. If okay, I mean, like people p- people keep on saying like voting is a right. That's such a Western thing. Even on the Western side, it's such a new thing, because way back in the day, in the uh, in the fifteen hundreds, mm-hmm. which is relatively new in the first place, mm-hmm. like five hundred years ago, like people in Europe did not freaking vote. You no. had kings and knights and all these. Yeah, lords. they had all of that. They got lords. the power. Yeah, yeah. The nobles. They were the They're people no- that actually did something, say something. Yeah, but the regular person did not vote. You know, you what? Yeah, you, you're not even in that their midst. What are you even doing up there? So like, so they had like almost like almost like I don't know how many thousand years to practice with that whole idea of not voting, uh, like you know like that kind of a monarchy situation, dictatorship situation, mm-hmm. and now they trying to impose that this to relatively us. new thing to them on us. Yeah, it's funny because it's not working, and they see that it's not working because when they say oh elections are in Tanzania, elections are in Cameroon, oh blah blah blah, people go and cast a vote. By the end of the day, we already know yeah what is happening in the background so we we i'm not against that though just be a good dictator to your people yeah like just i mean like let people because examples in kenya Mm -hmm. kenya's politics 24 7. of course yeah like there's elections coming up i can't wait you know like (laughs) after these elections the next guys will start campaigning next year for the next four years (laughs) <laughs> I know. Ruto, it's, who is the next? Uh, is it Ruto the day, and uh, Raila? Raila. The, the day after the elections, <laughs> the guys won't be pre- want to be president. They'll start campaigning. They'll start right away. The right campaign away. begins early. <laughs> but I, I think that is not that is basically to what I see in America. Oh, I mean, after the presidential elections, the next they just start start right away again. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they just be preparing for the next four years. At least, yeah. they, they give, I mean, at least they, they, sometimes they, 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 they have, have, there's a leeway. You know, primary. I, I, I love and the, then you go to. I love the thing with the thing with the thing with, uh, the, thing with, with the, uh, the American system is like elections is every two years. Mm. Not presidential. Oh, presidential is every four years. is every four years. Like mm-hmm. you talk local, like governor or um, senators. Senators, yeah, those are two yeah, years. E- yeah. yeah, that's every two years. Mm-hmm. But the thing with America is like it's the opposite for Africa, where it's like in the United States is like the two houses have combined they have much more power than the president. Yes, but in Africa, the president has, has much more, more power, power than the house. Okay, and and like Kenya, which is weird because the judicial system has more power than the president. But really? that's, how, that's how it should be in Kenya, yeah. No, I like that. No, 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 the house because you said the judiciary, look, right? In Kenya, yeah, in Kenya, the judiciary, he's talking about the justice system, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah, how yeah, it should yeah. be, yeah. The judi- that is how it should the, be. Okay, I thought you turn in general, okay, okay, no, yeah, okay. In general, in Africa, in most ca- African countries, it's the president has much money. No, I don't like it when the president has whatever the president say goes, yeah, period. What are you, I, period. I need somebody like one of the things Nobody we are lacking in Africa is accountability, though, yeah, that's something that we can never lose sight of accountability. When you look at how presidents in Africa operate. They just pass executive orders. Now, they shoot them into parliament. In and ca- they're in action. They even make private deals. I remember, I'm from Congo. You guys will remember Mobutu. Oh, dude. He signed a <laughs> private <laughs> deal. <laughs> that guy he was... signed a they private come. deal with just Japanese to, to, to manufacture cars in South Africa. That's his pa- private personal company. It's supposed to be for the country. But that was his private oh, come company. Come on, man! What are we even saying? The president of my country has a lot we of. We found out in 1995. Yeah. So you that's see that what, what happens when the, when the president has more power than the judiciary system. In Kenya, like uh, if the president says something you don't like, you go to court, you sue him. <laughs> that is how it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's accountability. I mean, like yeah. people keep on saying the biggest business in the United States is like a litigation. You know, like having lawyers 24/7. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In yeah. Kenya, like it's not getting to the point of being like the U.S. Like being a lawyer is so much money. Because you, you look at me the wrong way, I'm going to sue you. Like, Jesus Christ, come on. <laughs> no, I feel like accountability like that on politician mm-hmm. should be something we're promoting. 
We have to enforce. I'm not even regretting too. taking the African because because quarter tonight. Look, I'm yeah. not. And it comes with corruption too. You have to, you know, lawyers and and and, and judges in Africa are corrupt. All you have look, to do is know where they live. Look, period. I mean, like here, here is a SUV, five thousand dollars. As in, no, in, in in Kenya, if it was that corrupt, uh, the president like wouldn't have like forced through, like you know, because during the, the president the, will own all of them. Yeah, the last during the last election, there was like uh, you know, like the president who said that he won. There was this whole situation about like. You know, like there was some discrep discre discrepancies. Ah, English. Discrepancies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like ah, English. So yeah, so that situation, the court, the the chief justice of Kenya ruled like, hey, we're gonna annul this election. You guys need to go vote again. Good. I mean, good. So, so they voted again, and he won the second time. But the first time, the judicial system was like, yeah, we're not buying this stuff. You guys go vote again, campaign again, and vote again. Transparency. You know, gentlemen, there's this thing I've been I've been asking African youth to do, and they're, a lot of them are really responding re responding uh, positively about it. Like, okay, let's start hosting presidential debates in all Africa. And I, I actually did propose for them that me and Mr. Jean Paul, we're gonna travel, come host this debate. You don't have to pay us. I mean, like we want to have a two-way conversation with whoever wants to run for office. I mean, th that makes sense, but like. It depends on the country too. Yeah, like not every country, not not, not like uh, not all of Africa is electrified to have internet or TV or anything. Mm -hmm. So well, no, we we would carry our equipment. First of all, no, yeah, but, uh, but I'm talking I'm talking about like the people watching at the debate. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's that's that's, that's going to be a big problem. I mean, too. like like yeah. in Kenya, like uh, but, a good chunk of okay. the population is connected, so like watching debates is easy. It's easy. Okay, this is mostly for diasporas, people are, that uh, are well landed and well advanced in society like you yeah. of course these debates are like okay if me and mr jean paul was to go host a debate in this country we don't need your payments mm -hmm. all we need is for you to accept that okay come and host your debate Just we create mm -hmm. our questions you don't have to see them and at that point at that debate we don't care if you're the ex-president or you're the you're the future president at that mm -hmm. point you are mr whoever you are yeah. and we're gonna be direct with you as much as possible definitely yeah everyone that's out here can see the debates send it to your people text it to your people let them know this is how the debate went. This is who I think you should be voting for. I mean, like, yeah, like, you know, like this, or like uh, on these, these different platforms on mm -hmm. Instagram or Facebook or whatever, you can watch a debate and, like, you know, like vote while the debate is going on. Good. That's Africa good is that. because in my country, when there was an election, after the election, they cut off the power. The next day, the that happens every <laughs> every. That's, that's like <laughs> power on the internet. Even this is not even a love you matter. Power on the internet. Yes, the internet, yes. They cut off the they next day. The result come in favor of the current president. <laughs> Ah. They always do that. We all know. We they know. That. That's such an old, <laughs> it's a, such an old, old, old game. Right. Old trick. Yeah, yeah. it's a, yeah. Oh, oh, the power the went out. They cut it off. So, the yeah. internet went out. So you don't call and text mm -hmm. also. And so this is what so happened. Out. It happened in Uganda when like uh, Bobby Wayne was winning. Yes. Blackout. I Blackout. Mean, then he came back. He lost. But he lost. That's what I'm saying. Right right how did that happen? <laughs> he was leading <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, we were watching that election. I'm like, the way I see it. This guy is winning. Yeah. Right? He was Both even hooked, bro. Man. We know there are tricks. Boom. Blackout. Blackout. <laughs> Blackout. <laughs> the next day, President, President. Museveni won. I, I, mean, I, I, I was, I was like, Old school game. Old I was, school no, game. I was not even watching that stuff. Yeah. I was like, three, two, one. There yep. you go. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Jean Paul, I think uh, we need to wrap the security yeah. issue up. And, anyways, we are seeing a lot of topics that we, we're going to be discussing about absolutely, in the nearest absolutely. future. We have elections now, mm -hmm. we have democracy in Africa. All of these mm -hmm. topics are very important. Coming topics. up, stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, election. I thought you had a question before we conclude. Oh, no, that, that question is for our TikTok. Uh, when, yes, when we wrap this up, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, like, uh, in conclusion, I'll probably say, like, uh, democracy uh not democracy like peace and security is just need good leadership skills yes and uh, like people presidents who are really 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 into the whole um you know they they are really in it for their people you have a good leader they will enforce everything that we so say in like in order uh, for africa to s uh, achieve peace and stability we need good leadership mm -hmm. we need good defense system mm -hmm. yeah we need to control our cost our air traffic air mm -hmm. and land we Amen. need f those forces to call it so we can protect our land mm -hmm. because we don't i mean like the last time rwanda had an airline was a long time ago and now it's like growing big time run there in my country to live from goma to kinshasa it's run there that's yeah. and ethiopia that's function they have a monopoly I'm on that surprised. road and yeah, because no, it we, used to be the need, other way around we need to work on that yeah, yeah. well our uh, gentlemen we need to wrap the, the this episode up so. okay okay yeah, yeah. all so right do so you want to do that? There you go.
tune in uh, for our next episode. Alex, mm-hmm. thank you so much thank for joining much, Africa's Alex. Home thank today. You for time, yeah. Thank you for, for your time and stay tuned. Make sure you share, like, like. comment the video. We'll mm-hmm. see you next time in our topic of democracy. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, guys.